Welcome to The Bold Book of the Day with Dr. Denise Nicholson, a show that is a central hub and safe space for authors to share their stories. The Bold Book with Dr. Denise begins now. Hey everyone, welcome to The Bold Book of the Day. My name is Dr. Denise Nicholson, and this podcast is for anyone looking for inspiration. Today's episode is with the beautiful Darnell Osborne. Welcome, Darnell. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. So Darnell Osborne is a certified public accountant licensed under the Georgia State Board of Accountancy and is a member of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. She's also a licensed chartered accountant under the Bahamas Institute of Chartered Accountants, BICA, and an accredited director of the Chartered Governance Institute of Canada. She was elected president of BICA from 2014 to 2017. Darnell has vast experience in the financial service industry in the Bahamas. She was appointed as the first female chairman of the Bahamas Power and Light in 2017. Darnell is an owner and director of six Dairy Queen franchise operating in the Bahamas for the past 15 years. She is the founder of Citadel Consultants Limited, a financial service consulting company, and she enjoys fostering women empowerment. Her website is citadelconsultantslimited.com, and we'll give you that information later. And the website, another website is darnellosborne.com. Okay. And we will give you, we'll put a link to all of that for you to get to know her a little bit better. So welcome Darnell. I am so glad to have you. I'm saying all of that, reading all of these great things about you, but you tell me, who are you? Well, I am Darnell Osborne, a mother of two children, married. Um, I enjoy, enjoy people. I really enjoy helping people. Um, I've always, I guess they, I've, I've always been told I had great leadership skills. And so, hence, I've held several leadership roles from, I guess, from primary school up to high school where I was head girl and then uh, participated in the College of the Bahamas Senators and I've always been very keen on doing the right thing wherever I am. And um, so that has helped me in some instances, I guess. Sometimes it, it hurts you for a bit, but in the end, I, I believe honesty and, and truth will always prevail. So that is who I am. What you see is what you get. Um, my word is my bond. So if I tell you something, it is. If I can't do something, I will tell you I can't do it. But I'm just, I try to be my uh, an authentic person. Just, yes. just what you see is what you get. Yes, beautiful. Thank you so much. So I'm here with you today because I met you at the Lisa Nichols retreat and it was just an amazing time. And we created this beautiful anthology, Becoming Dynamic. And you have written a chapter in this book. Can you tell us first just a little bit about this, writing this chapter and what it meant to you? Well, it certainly was out of the box, me, me doing something out of the box, which Lisa, if anyone follows Lisa, they know that's what she, she always encourages you to do. I, I did it with my knees shaking because as an accountant, I'm not a natural writer. I love reading. I've always um, enjoyed reading from a child, but I never really enjoyed writing that much. And when I met all of you beautiful ladies, I, it was just like, it was at a very difficult time of my life. I had just lost my mother the year before. And I had also just started my big public tobacco. Uh, so at the time I had a lot more time on my hands and. I had ever had before in my life, suddenly I was home. And I then met Lisa Nichols, like I said, in, in a very extraordinary way. And she then be became my neighbor. And she just, during the pandemic, and she just continued to 
encouraged me to do things that I'd never done before. She introduced me to a whole new set of people like yourself. I had never met a Dr. Denise Nicholson. Uh, I, all my colleagues, uh, all of, of the people, the people I normally came into contact were, were accountants, CPAs or business professionals. And so it was just, I guess so intriguing and so delightful to meet such uh, professional women, but in different fields and who were doing something completely different that I did not even know that you could do and make money doing it. So it was a real pleasure to come to the retreat and, um, and meet all of you ladies from, from around the world. And then when the idea came up about doing the, anthology I was like oh no I it's definitely not for me <laughs> and and it, it was as a result of of the retreat I met so many uh, other people and, and and Lisa encouraged us to all go into these groups as you remember um, these accountability groups they call yes. them and so we had calls every once every two weeks and I was in this small group about five or six women and one of the women um, who was in the group, the accountability group with me was Dr. Sue Carter from mm -hmm. Atlanta. And Dr. Sue is, is uh, quite renowned for her writings. And she's a lecturer, a former, I, I think she worked in the prison sector, but also an accomplished lawyer yes. and working at Georgia State. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying, um, I remember someone saying, well, did you submit your article? And I'm like, oh, I, I, I guess conveniently forgot about <laughs> contributing because I was like, there's no way I could contribute to an international book. And so Dr. Carter said to me, Sue, Dr. Sue said to me, as we call her, she's like, Darnell, she said, I will help you. She said, I'll set aside a few hours on an afternoon and we'll go through, just write what you want to write. She's and amazing. yeah, she is an amazing person. There were so many amazing women uh, we met with, at the retreat and formed very dear friendships around the world. And the thing is, um, so I set aside, she said, just write what you just, just write whatever you're thinking. And of course me not being a writer and just being so, emotional at the time having just lost my mother I guess I should say I wrote a whole I think I probably wrote three biographs about my mother and the loss <laughs> of my mother and all this other stuff right and uh, when we met she's like boy I, I can really tell you really love your mother and as she said but you know can we put that into one uh section because that's not all of you Right. And she, and she obviously knew from my writings that I was uncomfortable writing about me and my feelings because as accountants, we don't talk about feelings. You know, this is a whole yeah. new world for me. We, we talk about numbers and how it's a, it's a precise science. You, you don't think about your feelings in, in our daily work. And so so she really spent I, I, it's, it was amazing that she spent about two or three hours with me that Friday. And by the time she was finished, she was like, you you have a piece, you have a contribution. And I went back and, <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow, I can do it. Right? So she really, really gave me the confidence um, to do it. And I really appreciated her because, you know, as you all know, um, most of you have several jobs going on at the same time. You're writing a book, you're doing a motivational <laughs> seminar like you, Denise. Yes. And, um, so, and um, you know what? It also in in meeting these ladies, meeting you all, I also then felt more at home because I always sort of felt not at home completely anymore in the accounting profession. Mm -hmm. I had spent thirty years uh, number crunching, working my way from a junior accountant at Price Waterhouse, and I and and it. I have no complaints about it because you know, it gave me the lifestyle that I wanted. I enjoyed the accounting. And when I went off to university, it was either accounting or law that I wanted to do. Most people said I should have been a, a lawyer, but I chose accounting because I found that I was good in it and um, or good at it. 
And so I, it, it would, it then with this new group and these new ladies that I met, it, it gave me a, I felt a sense of peace because while, I, like I said, I'd spent 30 years being an accountant. I had then also went into other in outside of audit and went into other industries and investments that I enjoyed. And that then led to me investing in my own private business and franchise. And I then felt like, Darnell, you're doing so many things outside of what, you know, the, the norm is or what people expect an accountant to do. And so I always struggled with that because I always felt like I wanted more um, out of life that wasn't completely satisfying with the accounting. And so in meeting you ladies, it then gave me, it's like most of these women are doing all sorts of different things all at once. And it gave me that comfort and peace. And I felt like at home and it gave me the confidence to even think, well, wow, I can write, you know, because I yeah. also throughout my career and throughout my experiences, because like I said, I, from the accounting uh, firm to offshore accounting, to the insurance in this street, and also my board experiences, my directorships were quite interesting. And I always had a love for good corporate governance, doing the right thing in, corp in, 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 in directing a company. But that also caused me to have a lot of stress because mm. most people weren't interested in that. Most people were interested in, you know, just doing what is is you know, politically correct, doing what, and I've never been that type of person. I've always been a person who I will firmly, respectfully say what I believe is the right thing to do. I'm never going to stray from that. And yes. so even if it costs me my job, as it is, um, I'm prepared for that. And I accept that because, and in particular, in my last um, episode with the power company, I accepted that, you know what? I could would not do it any other way. That was the cost I had to pay for being authentic and being principled. And so I accepted that. And I just have a firm and strong belief in God that it'll work out in the end. And, mm -hmm. and you know, so it was almost like God was shifting me, shifting me out, just saying, you know, you're really not an accountant anymore. Yes, I know you're a good accountant. People always said I was a good accountant. You know, they always say she's an excellent CPA, right? Whatever. I mean. um, but I always, I just, I just did not feel comfortable number crunching anymore. Um, mm -hmm. I felt like I had a bigger calling. Um, I, I, I felt always that I had a boldness and um, to, to, to be, Authentic, like I, I just always, I'm never afraid, put it like that. I just, people ask me, well, weren't you scared in some instances? And so I'm like, not really. I don't stop to be afraid. <laughs> I just do whatever I think is right. And I search myself. And, and that's the one thing I do. I do spend time meditating and reflecting. I sleep on things. And I, once I've done that and my conscience is clear i i go forward in boldness and i just do what i think i i have to do and i i worry about it afterwards and sometimes afterwards it's like oh wow my god you know but that's just me just to, to clarify or to explain what had happened and I had been appointed as the first female chairman of the Bahamas Power and Light, as, as Dr. Nicholson said, and um, I, I was sought out by the, the newly formed government at the time, having spent um, uh, years in the trenches supporting the, 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 the party at the time. And I was sought out as a former president of the Bahamas Institute of Chartered Accountants and having worked internationally and, and done a lot of work with the legislation and having great respect in the business community. So I was sought out for the, the chairmanship 
of the um, Bahamas Power and Light. Now, if anyone has ever uh, chaired a public uh, board, a public enterprise board, and in particular, if you've chaired one in the Caribbean, you know that there are several times and things that you may look at and may have to make a decision on as to whether ethically you can do it or not. And so there were several things that came to my attention and, and, the, and there was just not me. We had five or six board members, but there were two others who felt the same way I did. And um, we just felt that, you know, these were things that we felt strongly enough about that we could not go along with and we could not support. And we went about attempting to do the right thing by, by a, a, advising the government um, and, and the, the chief of the, 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 the country of what was taking place and- You got in trouble. We got in trouble. <laughs> So we got in trouble because I guess we were not supposed to, we were not supposed to do that. We so that's when I met you because right. you, that's you met, okay. You met me when I was fired first. Oh my right? God. I met so many great <laughs> women at this encounter at the dynamic women's retreat. And mm. that's how this book came about. We, right. you know, there was so, I was in the room, like, I cannot believe there were so many greats in one place. So many people doing absolutely amazing things at, as business. They were like right. business bosses, business boss, business boss, right. business boss. Right. And I was, uh, I wasn't overwhelmed. I was just happy. I was like, so many exactly. people are like me. So many people, are, cause, because I'm, I'm, I'm. I've been an entrepreneur for so many years. I think I was 19 when I opened my first beauty salon. Right. So I've been an entrepreneur for many years, but I've never been in a room. And that's because I guess I'm, 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 I'm not traveled well. Right. <laughs> I wasn't in the right groups because right, ever since right. then, uh, that kind of room has been more and more common for me. But that right. was the first time. And that's when I met you and Dr. Sue and yes. so many of the great people that are going to be yes. interviewed. Alana, so many people. Yes. You guys, you will meet them all up in here yes. on this yes. podcast. But then you, it was at that time that you've just been. I you know, had just been yeah. fired publicly. Not just yeah. that, I was oh fired publicly, um, you know, on national TV, I was fired by the minister wow. and wow, well, we wow, were wow. fired. There was myself and uh, two other directors and uh, right. one being a gentleman, a young gentleman, professional engineer right. and um, another one, um, CPA. And I know that was an ordeal for you. So I want it you to tell me. It was a tremendous, it was the lowest point I think I've been in my life because mm -hmm. my mother had just passed. Yes. I okay. Know. So the firing, okay. I can handle the firing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, the firing I can handle because, you know, like I said, if I believe that I've done nothing wrong, I'm doing the right thing. You understand for what you believe. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. But what have you learned from that that what? entire ordeal? Because right. I know it, I know the process, mm. I know what you went through, and I know the outcome. Amen. Yeah. But I want to hear the lesson because there's someone someone is listening yes. and they may be going through the same thing where they yeah. need what, to stand what, for what they believe. Yeah, what the lesson to me, I will do it all over again because I think that you should always stand up for what is right. Okay. Yes. I think that there's a greater cause. Our cause and our our concern was a national interest and what was in the best interest of the country. Yes. And so if that meant bucking heads in terms of of individuals and egos, then so be it. So that is the lesson I learned because just so just to briefly say what happened, I, I then because I was at such a low point, of course I had to catch myself for a day or two and figure out like what is going on here? Why are they saying these things? Because and it turned into, oh, we fired them because of some um, misappropriation of $50 or whatever it was. Something right. ridiculous. But you knew the truth. You knew 
I knew the truth. So and I, that lesson to people is to stand by your truth. When you yeah. know the truth, you stand by your truth. You find uh, whatever allies, because I certainly learned, and the lesson I learned is you don't need a whole village, hmm. but you could have one or two key people who support you. And I am eternally grateful from a professional standpoint for the two directors, Nick Dean and Nicola Thompson, who stood be, be beside me with um, my truth or our truth. And, and that made a whole yeah. lot of difference when we pursued the legal case against the government. So just, you know, for clarity, we sued the government. Um, and four years later, when the government had changed, um, because the, the, the government went through a whole, people, people paid attention when the, the lie started about me, because right. in particular, because they knew me from a professional, they knew my public image, they knew what I had done for the Institute. So it was like, no, they're not talking, no, something isn't right. So, right. they, so they knew and, you and they stood up for you. Yes, what? and then the public, yeah. you know, just did not buy into it. And eventually it just went downhill for them from there. Mm -hmm. And um, it, the lesson there though, is that you have to build, no matter what you do, even if you're just starting out, starting your caress, you have to build a reputation of mm. honesty and integrity. Yes. Okay. And yeah. transparency. So people knew that they were waiting to hear what I had to say about it. Now, given that we then went into a, a legal battle, I didn't say too much personally. I then let the lawyer speak and I did not go um, on the requ um, requested talk shows and trying to win the public. I didn't have to do that because my reputation spoke for itself. And mm -hmm. so that helped. And that's the lesson. You build a, 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 a reputation of integrity and honesty. And mm -hmm. it, build it, a reputation it will withstand. Of integrity. Yeah, it will withstand because even if they try to uh, permeate the air with lies and whatnot at first, it, it's just not gonna, it's not gonna stick. And during this time, I also learned how important it was my faith during my, my you know, younger years and, and my, my, my faith in God and believing that things would, everything will come to an end at some point and yeah. things would work out because you have to have that, that ability to have hope. Because if you don't have hope, then you despair. Mm. And I'm telling you, at days you could yeah. despair. I mean, some days you had to just go right back to bed. Some days I had to go back to bed. It's like, I can't, this, no, no. But I, at, at the end of it, it was always this message of hope in my spirit. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's very, very um, important to build, um, if you're building or grow, um, nurturing children and whatnot you have to nurture them with faith and, and, and hope and belief in my view of, in some something bigger um, yes. because you know at some point you're gonna have that's all you may have to lean on because you also one of the other lessons you learn is that you have some people who they some friends they can they are with you at the beginning but they they're not going to be there at the end because they mm. just cannot they cannot withstand the isolation the um the you know, test they the cannot test. withstand the test exactly no, and so I, I, go mm -hmm, ahead go ahead no 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 I'm, finish your thought i'm saying even for that i'm grateful because mm -hmm. what it then meant for me is i you know some people would just read it out and i'm grateful for that because you know, had these things not happened, and and these people, these friends could include family as well. Um, had had those this thing not happened, and those people not been weeded out, you know, you may never see their true self. True. And so, you know, at least it gives it painful. Don't get me wrong; it could be painful. Yeah. But at yes. least, you know, I prefer the truth. Okay. Right over over lies and, mm -hmm. and 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 shallowness and superficiality i i that's me and so 
So I'm grateful for, for that, you know, and um, I'm so grateful for meeting Lisa Nichols uh, because, you know, prior to that, I, sh I would not have come into contact with people like you and Dr. Sue and everyone else. And, yes. um, you know, I just, I, I probably might've come across you or, or Nate Lisa in Instagram or something and say, oh, that's a nice message kind of thing. And um, not really known, you know, I, I'm so proud when I listen to your messages on Instagram or Facebook or anything, because I'm like, I know these people and I know that they're, they're authentic. So, it, you know, I'm really, really grateful um, for having met, met you and, um, and the rest of the wonderful ladies. And, you know, yeah. the funny thing is I was more or less Lisa tricked me into standing <laughs> in the retreat. Let's talk about that, you know? But, but, I always laugh because, you know, like do, said, Lisa's going to get her way, period. Lisa's okay. going to get her way because she, you know, I've been following some of her stuff on online or whatnot during the pandemic she did a lot of free stuff online and i had time on my hand to do self-improvement and i'm like yeah and you know because you know uh, it was shit, perfect yeah. timing for you to work on yourself for me a it was almost times. like you know what it was like denise mm -hmm. it was like the good lord said let me slow her down mm -hmm. yeah that's people. how it was yeah because I was just so busy from the time I started working until the mm -hmm. time then I got married, then my mother got sick. My mother was on dialysis for 13 years. I was raising little children. We were building the business. Yeah. And you had no time to stop to, to really like stop for self-improvement or mm -hmm. think about what you might, who you are or anything like that. And so it was almost, and then I was on this board, and then I felt they had a calling to deal with the Bahamas Institute of Chartered Accountants because they needed. Do you guys education. hear the level of the kind of work this woman has done and the kind of people that were in that room? This is you're just seeing a glimpse of her, and this is everyone in the room was just as busy and doing boss ladies things like it's you're on crazy. boards, you have you're running your business. And doing courses and self development, and all yes. these women were just as similar. Tell us about your contribution in the book because I know you have a contribution yes. in this book because I edited it. So tell the audience about your contribution in this book and how, what do you expect from this book? What kind of impact? Yes. Yeah, my contribution, the book is called Becoming Dynamic. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think of anything. My theme maybe may have been like how how you become so resilient mm -hmm. and how you reinvent yourself mm -hmm. after something because and 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 I I think when I think back on my contribution is it, I I I recounted somewhat how you know my methods and how i built my resilience and mm -hmm. in terms of, of of getting to where i was and the things that i did mm -hmm. and um i guess i always remain of one of the things i remember and which is still me to this day i am an eternal optimist when everything seems like it's falling apart and whatnot i somehow always try to look and say there's going to be a brighter day and i really feel that even my darkest days i feel like this too shall pass like yes it can't stay the same like things don't stay the same and so that has helped me and that was my part of my contribution um to to um the book and one of the other things that i remember that was very prominent to me is surrounding yourself with just a, a handful of good sisters Yes. Okay. Because on your days, when some days when I just couldn't feel positive, and I would get a call from either my my sister Nicola Thompson, Margot Marie, I could think another one, Shandy, um, and you know, just a word of encouragement, like you okay, like you know, yes. and it's like that man. Real love. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And another friend who um, she she came to see me, um, and. And, and they, the, it was almost like the Lord showed me who 
who the handful of sisters were that I need to go forward with. Yes. Because there was another one that came to see me. She knew me from. I was born probably. We went to the same church. We had children at the same school. And she took me for lunch. And she, she said, listen. She said, I don't know what all is going on or what all this foolishness is about. And these, this was in the early days. Yes. She said, but people who know you know you and know it's not true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that meant a whole lot because mm. you had other people who were like, well, questioning you, know, you. Yes. Yeah. And then it was on the talk shows and then it was this and that. And, you know, well, maybe this, you know, so that meant then I had a, a sister who went to the same school with me and the same church with me yeah. my um, entire life. And she's quite blessed. She's an attorney and she has a, a home in one of the islands she'd built on the beach. And she came to me one day and she said, listen, and these people came to my house, okay? And she said to me, she said, my mother and I were talking about you. She said, and I, I want you to go and spend a week at my house mm -hmm. on the beach. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, you know, no, I can't go right now because the lawyers and I'm dealing. And she said, but Daniel, I need you to go. I said, I'm, I'm good. She said, I need you to take a break. And, you know, it was the care and concern of that hand full, full of, of good sisters and, yes. and friends that that's one of the things I wanted and had hoped to bring forth in my contribution to the book as well. Yes. Um, and also another thing that was very, very important to me, my two beautiful children, Najee and Celine. Naj, I did not tell them much about there was some of he was home from university. My daughter was just getting ready at some point to go to university the next year. And my son was he kept asking, I'm like, listen, I'm dealing with the lawyers. I don't know what's going on. This was before they even announced we had been fired in public. And I guess because, you know, children are smarter than we think. And when they started <laughs> reading all what was happening and listening to them because they kept putting my face across the the, the local TV and and both of them said to me and he came to me one day first and he said I am so proud of you Aww. for standing up and that meant a whole lot to me yes that can I carry you through yes. yeah the same thing she said I'm I'm proud of you mommy yeah you know because yeah. she knew what I had done she was here when I was on the campaign trail and stuff so she knew what it meant the 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 betrayal. Of, yes. you know what I had worked for more than he did but he started you know reading and talking to his friends and whatnot so you know I wanted to um, put forth in the book you know you you have to reflect on those important things when you when you are tr you know in in those kinds of tribulations yes. um, because they mean so much at the time and um, I would hope that this this book in terms of becoming dynamic. Yes. The impact on on um, on on people. I, I just want them to to be believe that they can be their authentic selves. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and stand up for what is right. Um, don't cower um, and and always uh, attempt to to operate in transparency so that when these tribulations trials and tribulations come you at least will have that peace of mind yes and you can sleep at night like i i slept at night okay yes. Yes. i knew i had done nothing wrong but had i done something wrong and it turned out another way later on i would not be sleeping at night right now because there are other people um who were in similar positions um, in the country mm -hmm. and chose to preserve their um, their positions and their uh, their salaries. So mm -hmm. Bear in mind now, I I went from there to zero, mm -hmm. okay, because I had a the, the wow. government had asked so me. So standing up had real financial consequences for you. Yeah, it had financial implications mm -hmm. because the government had had at the time. Um, when I first chaired, I was not executive chair. And then it it turned and it evolved into executive chair. So I had resigned my job of 17 years 
as finan chief financial person at the insurance company to take this on full time. And we were really progressing um, in that short period of time, but it just turned south because when you're dealing with egos or whatever, and you, you just don't do what they expect you to do, it just, it can turn out the way it turned out. Yeah. So there were real financial uh, hardships for me for taking that decision. However, I had to trust God. And obviously it was a good thing that I had built my personal business on the side as a, as a crutch. Right. Um, and well, not so much even as a crush, but just as an investment person, I built it for my retirement. Right. So I was at least able to turn to that somewhat. Um, and then the pandemic hit. So the business got hit. So it just means making adjustments though, you know. Pivot in, yes, yes. Yeah, That's what we're good at as women. We yeah. know how to pivot yeah. and just yeah. start anew and exactly. do what we need to do to not just stay afloat, it's, but to survive and thrive. To survive. It means mm -hmm. not driving. I was supposed to be buying me a new car because mm -hmm. I had what it meant having to drive a, a, a and I'm still driving it actually. I need to get the car. But it's just like it's just like okay, I'll get to it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it just means making adjustments and and doing the best that you can do because I also had another child entering university, so um, I had two at one point during this period. But thankfully, um, my husband was able to to pull some of that away from me. But still, you my salary looking at me. Uh, went from there to zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the impact so, financially. Yeah. The impact was, was not just you being tarnished in the public's eye, but it no. also affected you financially. And that's what you want people to take away from this. You know, yeah. guys, that when you are, are standing up for what you believe and standing up for no. being your true self and being authentic and for the values that you you believe in strongly, no. you no. are going to have to suffer consequences yeah. for yeah, standing you, up for what you believe you in. But if you believe it, you have to stand up for you what have you to believe. Stand up because you, know? you have to live with yourself in the end. I feel yes. good. I yes. feel good that when I met women like you, I could stand up and say, yes. you know, and I could I could be my authentic self and feel good that, you know, I didn't have anything to hide. Mm. Yes. Okay. And a lot of times I, I'm from Jamaica, West Indies, and a mm. lot of times the Caribbean and the, those you know islands they have so many great people that go into politics because you want to to help you want to make a difference and you're looking and seeing that so many things could be done and you're looking at the problem like i could fix that like it doesn't take <laughs> a, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to fix this problem and from the outside looking in you feel like this could easily be solved so you go in thinking okay this is going to be fixed in no time. But then you see the red tapes, the corruption, the things mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. the real barriers mm -hmm. to why things are not how they're and supposed not, to be. Exactly. You know? And the, and the thing is, for me, when um, I was a, a part of the, the, the government that got in, the party that got in, the party at the time won the election on 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 the anti-corruption theme and um wanting you know transparency and accountability so i thought they were serious okay and, mm. and you go in and it was like mm. okay this is the first time i'm going to chair a public enterprise and you go in thinking okay i'm going to do just as i did in private and you know clean up uh, by <laughs> you know this thing the next thing yeah and then Not you know happening. that was it, it wasn't it wasn't to be so i have no regrets that's the bottom line um i have no regrets and i would do it the same way all over again um because i i just did what i felt was right and in the end it worked out because uh when the government changed you came out the victor i came yes. out the victor yeah and um they decided the new government decided um last year not to pursue the not to even go ahead and trying to defend the case after the law, excuse me, the lawyers mm -hmm. um, reviewed and whatnot, and they settled. So we mm -hmm. did not have to go to court now. And um, so, so I came out the victor. Yeah. 
because you, you know? stood up mm -hmm. and you know it could have once you believe in something and you know your truth and mm -hmm. you know that you have nothing to hide stand up for what you believe in and, and stand really up. stand, stand on your word stand you on will your find, word. and you will find you may lose some friends you may lose family members but you will find a new set of people you will mm -hmm. find a new the real set. deal. Yes, the real deal. The real deal. Just so. like we have found with all yes. these women in this wonderful book, Becoming Dynamic. So, ladies and gentlemen, you see the kind of people that are in this book that have presented or contributed to Becoming Dynamic. It's a wonderful, impactful book, and I can't wait for you to read Darnell's story. You heard a little bit here, but you will hear a little bit more. What you will see and read a little bit more when you buy the book, Becoming Dynamic. We have an official in-person book launch coming up in June at the Barnes & Noble in Rockland, New York. And I can't wait to see you guys come out and meet and greet. Darnell is coming all the way from the Bahamas to be there. And you'll meet there. many more of the authors right there. So please come out. If you're interested in coming out, just uh, follow me on Instagram author Denise Nicholson, and I will be posting updates there, or you can send me an email at authordnicholson at gmail.com. Now, before we continue, before we end, I just want to say, Darnell, I have asked every guest these questions, and I can't wait to ask you these three questions. So these are three questions, these are three bold questions that I like to ask all my guests. What is one bold promise that you can share with the world? One bold promise is being authentic. Be your authentic self. That's, that sounds just like you. <laughs> exactly. I don't like fake. I, I really don't. I, yes. I don't like fake. I think you should be who you project yourself to be. Yes, and absolutely. So that's that's a bold promise that good I good advice, guys. You heard it here. Mm -hmm. Be authentic. And number two, what is a bold statement that you can share with your audience that you know will cause a paradigm shift in their life? Well, uh, I I guess you you have to to be resilient to be able to withstand mm -hmm. um, all the challenges that that. Um, will come your way when you are authentic. Yeah. Um, so that that is that is a You're resilient. Yeah, you need to be resilient. You need to develop develop or do things to build your resiliency. And if that means you have to do affirmations, find yourself in a new group of strong, positive women or whatever it takes, I think you need to 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 be resilient. Um, yes. because Good. that that will shift. That will cause that shift in your your life, you know? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a great, great answer. And resiliency, you know, is one of the theme that we have in this book. That is also how Lisa started her introduction. As a matter of fact, Lisa Nichols wrote the forward to our book. Yep. Grab the book and you can get it on all of the platforms, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, every platform on the internet but you can meet us in person and get all our signatures anyway here's number three what's a bold move that you'd like to make in the future oh well there are, i would say there are well, a couple of things if i would think on this uh la level that we're thinking about now in terms of book i am preparing to write a book so that's a bold move that I I would say I would would make. You're in publishing a book, okay? I'm publishing a book. Yes, she's not you just know? preparing; she's gonna publish a book, people. Publish yeah. a book. <laughs> and and the other thing is, you know, on a on a on a level, if we would take it back local or whatever, it could be local. Um, I you know, someone asked me the question. I was on a on a on a platform a few months back and someone asked me Grant, they said would you would you would you take on any roles like this again in the future and I guess they smiled and 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 they 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 probably knew the answer but I said of course I would you mean in the because, government or not on a national level or, oh, or to help okay. I would I would because I did nothing wrong 
Right. Okay. Um, I may do a few things differently. I may may change who I'm associated with in that regard if I think that, you know, you don't share the same views as I do. But I would do um, something again in, on a national level to help the country if called upon. Okay. It's not something that I, you know, I've never, I've always um, shied away from frontline uh, for, for various reasons, having the, the children as they were growing up. If called upon, I think in the future, I would do something um, if, if I find it, I'm led to do it, you know. Okay. Um, that sounds national, like an even bolder move. <laughs> yeah, national, international. Okay. If opportunities arise, I'm not saying it, it, I will, but, you know, I have to be, be led, you know. Yes, so, yes. pray about people. it. If yeah. you are asked, you'll pray about it. Yeah, Where I pray about it. Where can our audience connect with you? Okay, so I have two websites. Um, one is www. So they'll consultants limited ltd dot com, and then the other website is darnell osborne dot com. D a r n e l l o s b o r n e dot com. Beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate your company. I appreciate this conversation. You've talked about so many important things that I think is going to resonate with this audience. And I just want to say, I'm proud of you, sis. I'm so proud of you. And I'm glad you came out on the other end stronger and sane, okay? Because these things can, that, that's can mend, they tend to mess with our mental health. And so- <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm also so looking safe. forward to seeing you at the Knitted Together event this year. Yeah, can't wait to see you. Looking forward to coming. I'm really, yes. I really am. It's going to be a wonderful and amazing and spectacular weekend. Yes. yes. If you would like to write a book and publish it, please send me an email at authordnicholson at gmail.com. Thank you so much again, Darnell, for joining us. Thank you for you having are amazing. me. Thank you for enduring all that you've endured. And please come again when you have completed that book. Please come <laughs> again. <laughs> Thank bye -bye. you. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for the Bold Book of the Day with Dr. Denise Nicholson, a central hub and a safe space for authors to share their stories. Follow Dr. Denise on Facebook and Instagram at Denise Nicholson or go to denisenicholson.com. Remember, no one can share your story better than you.